Thank you for your question. We were planning to actually grow more, um, get more people into the paid user um, category. Um, first, we, we, did, uh, we developed the Web Academy, so today is actually the first day we're launching it. It's a new look with a better user interface for people to easier access the, the courses. Second, we're, we're, we're working towards more events to promote the Web Academy to more OFWs and Filipinos based here. Do you have a target number, for example, you know, beyond the 7,000 users that you have? I mean, is there a growth figure that you have, for example, in the next um, two to three years? Um, for 2017, we're, we're targeting um, at least um, triple that amount because for last year when we started the Web Academy, we've only been doing online promotion. So by the time that we do events, hopefully we, we gain more ground. Well, look, I mean, the use of technology allows you to go beyond borders, and that's why you have the OFWs in there. But look, I mean, OFWs are expected to plow in close to $30 billion uh, this year alone. I mean, how do you make sure that they channel their dirhams, pounds, and dollars into productive use, especially through your Web Learning Academy? How much are your prices? How reasonable are they? Okay, so we, we made the Web Academy really targeting for OFWs. Um, to have them to access uh, affordable, accessible, quality financial education. So it's affordable because it's only 500 pesos per course, per webinar. And for a whole year access for more than 50 webinars, that's uh, around 5,999. Um, basically what they will learn in the Web Academy is to manage their finances. But there's also um, a lot of topics about entrepreneurship, investing in the stock market, we get weekly um, testimonies from OFWs who have now gone home to the Philippines. They were able to save up, buy farms. Some of them are investing in the stock market. Some of them building apartments for rent. So, so rather than you know uh, tablets and Xboxes and cell phones, they're getting into these more productive investments. Exactly. So uh, one of our founders actually is an OFW himself. He experienced because of bad spending habits, not being able to manage his income. And if you teach these people who support 20% of the Philippine economy, uh, if you teach them how to manage their finances, you'll create a ripple effect. So more people will be entrepreneurs, more people will be responsible in having their, handling their money. Well, Joy, it's good you brought it up because Floyd Wikoko, who was here last year, talked about the idea of channeling these funds into more productive investments. But look, there's a big jump between financial literacy and entrepreneurship. Yeah. How do you grow your initial clients in and make them into entrepreneurs, which are the more value-added part of the economy? That's a good question. So after doing this for several years, we identified three aspects that are important in, uh, in this journey from illiterate to becoming an investor entrepreneur. First is financial education. It has to be accessible. Um, second, there has to be a social proof. Thank Filipinos you. like to invest when their friends invest in it. So when somebody's doing it, they, they're, they're more open to invest in it as well. Uh, the third aspect that's important is actually making the investment tangible. So in the Web Academy, uh, people who teach them are actually CEOs, industry experts. Um, so, they, they so you've got that mentorship it. ecosystem. Yes. Well, Joy, one last thing. We have a chart here on financial inclusion, right. the idea that we're lagging behind our peers. You're roughly half of Asia. And yeah. you think about formal savings, account holders. I mean, virtually half. And then, you know, digital payments, we're catching up. How does Web Academy and TGFI close that gap with this particular portal? Okay. TGFI, um, as, a, as a social mm -hmm. enterprise, um, has helped so many people. Those who are actively engaged in our seminars and webinars have reported that 95% have improved their financial standing. Uh, more than half have savings and investments other than the bank. So they have investment in real estate, they have insurance. It's because they have um, access to knowledge that they can do these things as well. So that's the first step towards financial inclusion is really education. So Joy, you have your proof points for your subset and you also have an April summit this in 2017 for financial literacy. Wish you all the best in that. Thank you very much.